Hi everyone, my name is Aditya and I'm a developer evangelist at Salesforce. In this quick take, I'm going to show you how you can deploy a Lightning Web Components open source app to Heroku. In case you're wondering how to create the app in the first place, then check out my previous quick take linked in the description below. Also, the app that I'm going to deploy doesn't use an Express API server. So in case you want to deploy apps that use an Express API server, check out my other quick take also linked in the description below. So let's get started. First, let's see what Heroku is. Heroku is a platform as a service offering that enables developers to build, run, and operate apps entirely in the cloud. It supports programming languages and frameworks like Java, Node.js, Scala, Python, Ruby on Rails, and many, many more. More information on Heroku is available on Trailhead. Links to those modules are present in the description. So here we are in an LWC OSS project, which we are now going to deploy to Heroku. Before we deploy to Heroku, let's look at two scripts from package.json that we will use today. The first one is the build script, which creates a production build using a bundler you have chosen when creating a project. It's typically either webpack or rollup. Next, the serve script, it initializes a simple express server setup to serve the build output. Let's run the build command. You can either run it from the terminal or just click the run script option here that VS code shows us. It actually runs the command npm run build, which creates a production build for us. Once the build process completes, you'll notice a new folder with the name dist with the transpiled files. These two JavaScript files have the LWC framework, your custom lightning web components, custom libraries, all of them built into both of them using webpack or rollup. Let's now run the serve command. Before running the command, let's actually look at what it does. So the serve command essentially executes the server.js file from the scripts folder. So let's open that. What this file does is to create a simple express server to serve the build output. This is different from the express API server. The file for the API server gets generated when you choose yes for the question, do you want a simple API server when you're creating the app? The API server holds a server side logic while the purpose of the server that gets created from this file is to only serve out static content from the build directory. Notice the port number on line number 12. This is the port number on which the express server runs. The port can either be passed as an environment variable or it will be initialized to 3001. Whenever you deploy this app to Heroku, Heroku assigns a port number dynamically to the app during runtime. And this value is passed to the port environment variable. Lines 15 and 17 are used to serve out the static content from the distribution folder. So now let's run the serve script. So again, I hover over this and click run script. And you'll see it initializes the express server on port 3001. Let's open it up in the browser. You'll see that the app is running successfully. And how do you validate if this app is indeed running from the distribution folder? Let's view the source. And what you can see here is the four transpiled files that we have seen in the distribution folder. So we know that these files are being served out from there. Now that you know how the production build and serve process works, let's now deploy this to Heroku. Since Heroku can host a variety of apps written in different languages, we need to tell Heroku that our app runs on Node.js and how to start it. For that, we create a proc file. It is a simple text file named proc file without any file extension and it must be created in the app's root directory. What should be the content of the proc file? Within the proc file, you declare the process type and the command to run. We can create different process types like web to run web apps, worker to create background apps, clock to create scheduled apps and many more. Since we are trying to create a web app, we'll use the web process type. 
and the command we are going to run is going to be npm run serve because that is the one that we have just used to serve the build output. Let's put that in this proc file and save it. And that's it. We are now ready to deploy this app to Heroku. There are two ways in which you can deploy to Heroku using the Heroku CLI or the web UI. Using CLI, you can either push all of your code to a Heroku Git endpoint or you can deploy a Docker image. From the web UI, you can connect your app to a GitHub repo and trigger deployments from there. Or you can create a deploy to Heroku button on the repo on click of which the app gets deployed. Let's use the Heroku CLI and Heroku Git to deploy this app. Once you install the Heroku CLI, you can open up a terminal and log into your Heroku instance with the command Heroku login. This takes you to the browser window where you can give your username and password and authenticate. Once the authentication is complete, you can create an app with the command Heroku create. This command creates an app with a random name. If you want, you can also pass a name as a parameter. So once the app is created, it's going to do two things. It's going to create an endpoint for your app and it's going to create a remote endpoint for Git. So you can access that endpoint by running the command git remote hyphen V where you can see that the Git endpoint for Heroku is listed with the name of Heroku. Now in order to deploy our app, it's a simple Git push to this remote endpoint. So let's just add all our files and give a commit message. Notice how it runs the pre-commit hook and automatically runs the prettier and ESLint. And once all of the code is committed to the repo, we just need to push it using the command git push Heroku main, which basically tells push all of this code to the Heroku endpoint and push it to the main branch. So what you can see here is once I pushed my code, it has run the build command. Why is that? It's because every time you deploy an app to Heroku, it's going to scan your package.json file for a build script. And if a build script is found, it's automatically going to run it. So the moment I pushed my code, it found a build script and that is what it has run. And once build completes successfully, you can see that the build has succeeded and it has searched the proc file to decide how to run this app. So now you can see that the app has been deployed successfully. You can just click the link to see it in action. So here you can see the same LWC app that was running locally has now been deployed to Heroku. And this is how you deploy LWC OSS apps to Heroku. As I mentioned earlier, if you are looking to deploy an app that uses an Express API server, then check out the other quick take linked in the description below. Thank you for watching. If you have learned something, be sure to like this video. If you want to get more content like this pushed directly to you, Click subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications.